everyone, it's T. So today I wanted to talk about Unicorn Store, and I started off wanting to talk about the production design and costume in the film, but then as I was doing my research, I realized that, like, no one liked this film. Apparently it got, like, middling reviews from everyone. The only things that I could find on YouTube were, like, just tearing it apart. I was like, this was before I rewatched the film, but I was like, I think I remember having pretty good memories of that film. Are people tearing it apart because of the whole, like, we hate Brie Larson campaign that went on a couple years ago, but whatever. So I skimmed through the film again, just to see if it was something that was actually really bad. And I just was looking at it through rose colored glasses. And I found myself like really liking the film still, still chuckling at the jokes and stuff like that. So uh, this is kind of pivoted from just talking about production design and costume to why I like the film <laughs> in general, um, which also includes the production design and costume as well as a couple of other things. So to start things off, just a warning that I don't know how to talk about movies without spoiling them, unfortunately. But I do suggest you watch the film and make your own opinion about it. So the basic synopsis of the film is it follows the main character, Kit, played by Brie Larson, who is an artist that failed out of art school. She has to go home, live with her parents, and find a real job. It's basically about her struggle growing up, being an adult, being in the real world, discovering what that means. But one day she meets a salesman who offers to give her a unicorn. She has to choose between like the, the colorful fantasy of the unicorn and the boring everyday of adult life. So the reasons I liked it were the costume, production design, um, the lighting and the general, I guess, quirkiness of it. <laughs> and so I'm going to be talking about those uh, in sections, I guess. The movie starts with a montage of the main character, Kit, as a child, basically just being artsy and doing kid things, and then moves into her as an adult in art school, being the only one whose art is big and bright and colorful and happy. And honestly, because this is a comedy and a fantasy, everything is exaggerated for dramatic effect like as she's moving back into her parents house she's wearing the same clothes that she was in the art gallery that is a rainbow sweater like plastic jacket it's very interesting the costumes in this uh i was able to source a lot of the clothes that she's wearing this particular rainbow top is from forever 21 i think or something equivalent i don't really think they focused on like brands or anything as much as like as much as like the feeling of it rainbows are a big thing especially i guess with the motif of like unicorns rainbows have to be a big thing almost all of her clothes are rainbow colored rain rainbow-esque in nature so next we see her in a cloud shirt as she's lounging around on the couch depressed it's actually a dress from lazy oak that they cut as a shirt or maybe they just tucked it into her pants but i always like that in costume design when they get something and they think well i like the general co concept of this but it doesn't necessarily fit the character like a bodycon short dress doesn't fit this character so you know what does let's just make it into a shirt i also really like the contrast of her costumes versus other characters costumes her parents costumes for example in this scene she's wearing the blue shirt she's kind of standing out from the background everything in her parents house is very brown they're very like naturey outdoorsy people we're not talking about production design right now but she's literally sitting under a fish she's also watching rainbow bright on tv which is another little detail that has nothing to do with costume design but i like it it both contrasts with the house around her but it's also like a fun little like nostalgia kind of thing especially for someone who was born in, I think Brie Larson was born in the 80s, so she would probably have nostalgia for Rainbow Bright. But it's also something that people in the 2000s who weren't born in the 80s have like reclaimed, as well as like Care Bears and My Little Pony to a certain extent. Also a great little detail is that her feet have glitter on them. Another detail that I really like is that in all of her outfits, she wears like beaded necklaces that you make for your friends and all of that. She wears those with almost all of her outfits. I just think it's a fun little detail to really show that she can't really let go of like childhood and stuff like that. This is an outfit that only gets like a minute of screen time. It's literally a mesh overlay dress that she's wearing on top of like a pair of sweatpants. Almost like those those kids that like wear princess dresses over their over their pajamas. Like those kids that get up get straight up from bed and then they'll throw on a princess dress. I think that's a good way of like aging up that kind of concept. 
So when Kit uh, decides that she needs to be a grown-up and get a job in order to impress her parents and everyone around her, she decides to borrow her mother's suit. The suit is a grey wool suit, the skirt is long and pleated, and it's generally like just the opposite of fun. And definitely something that someone taking all of this literally would think this is this is adulthood. But what I really like about Kit's character in the show is obviously she doesn't have, she doesn't like own regular white collared shirts. So in order to wear the suit, she has to wear some of her own clothes underneath it. They all have very interesting prints. Some of them have very loud colors. As the movie goes on and she starts to accept that like she wants to be herself, she begins to get more and more flamboyant and colorful with the colored shirts that she wears. One of the last ones that she wears is a blue frilly, almost cowboy-esque colored shirt, <laughs> which is very fun. And it kind of goes to show her attitude about her job throughout the thing, throughout the movie, moving from I want to be what everyone's definition of an adult should be to I want to be myself. Another character who has an absolutely incredible wardrobe is the salesman. I don't think he's ever named, but it's Samuel L. Jackson. Just, just an incredible wardrobe. And he only wears multicolored suits. The first suit that we see him in is pink. He wears gold shoes. He has that wig on, <laughs> but it's kind of amazing. And it has tinsel in it, which is also kind of amazing. All I really know is that I want to dress like Samuel L. Jackson does in this film. He wears corsages, his ties. There's one that resembles like a candy cane, like a Christmas candy cane. He's very shiny and otherworldly. He's a very, he's a very good fantasy character in my opinion. Okay, when you think of like a traditional kind of salesman, uh, you think of him in a suit, but usually that suit is like black or blue or gray or whatever. This man only wears pastels and just like big, out there um, clothes. If a man in a black suit came up to me and was like, you know, I'm trying to sell you a unicorn, I would be like, no, absolutely not. If a man in colorful pastel clothes that were like, I don't know, shorts and a t-shirt came up to me and was like, I'm gonna sell you a unicorn, I'd be like, mm, no. Samuel Jackson in a pink suit? I'd think about it. Near the end, he wears a blue suit with like red rose embroidery. He kind of matches what the other characters are wearing in the scene, but he still stands out because of the red. So going back to Kit for just a second, there's also a thing that I really love that they do with her outfits, which is she wears a lot of tennis skirts, like American Apparel-esque tennis skirts. But of course that's not conducive for a film because tennis skirts are notoriously short. They're kind of impossible to wear without showing your, your butt at, at any point. The camera is like, you know, there's a lot of low angles. So what I like that they do, they just put sweaters around her waist, which is just like an incredibly middle school thing to do. It really adds like dimension to her wardrobe and to her costumes. So it's really interesting that they're mixing patterns in that way. So going back to Kit's character, kind of matching other characters. She meets this hardware store worker named Virgil who's going to help her build the stable for her potential unicorn. They get off to a rocky start but eventually they they develop a friendship and it's so cute. I really like that they kind of start matching clothes eventually and it's like it's cute in like a, a coupley or a best friend way but it's also it matches their individual personalities. Virgil is a lot more like toned down, laid back, whereas Kit is a lot more loud and bombastic. I really like this jean jacket that she's wearing with all of the patches and pins on it because like that's the most loud way that you can wear a jean jacket but also like in the movie, she's trying to move some hay. Oh, I need like a jean jacket in order to do farm work. And then she picks the most just, just inconvenient piece of clothing that you could. Virgil is also wearing a denim overshirt in this scene and they match and it's cute. And similarly, when she goes camping with her parents, she's wearing a pair of denim overalls and also orange rain boots. It's almost like she's like, this is something that you're supposed to do when you're going camping. And then she misses the mark by like, like 10, 20%. Her outfit during the climax is probably the most incredible outfit that I've ever seen. Why are you in a costume? Oh, 
These are just my clothes. It is a green jacquard suit with a tassel overcoat. She's also wearing tassels in her bun. There's honestly so much I could say about this, but like she's going to finally be herself at work and being herself at work means wearing this just wild suit. And honestly, I'm just so here for it. Like it's a really good character moment in which like she decides like, okay, I'm going to use this opportunity to really show them who I am. Lastly, I wanted to talk about when she's finally able to see whether or not the unicorn she's about to be sold is real. Um, she's wearing a pair of pajamas with fuzzy slippers and a kind of like pastel greeny rainbow color. It is maybe the second wildest uh, outfit that she wears in this film. The colors that she wears complements the colors that Virgil is wearing, that the salesman is wearing, and it really just proves that like there are people out there that will accept her and that's that's what she wanted um, from the beginning. The next I'm going to talk about production design. In general, a lot of it speaks for itself. When she goes to the office, it is big and gray and she feels lost. Her parents' home is brown and boring and she feels out of place. Her own place within the basement has kind of her colorful paintings, but also is mostly brown and gray because she feels out of place. But what I really like is the store. It's basically just this big warehouse. There are lots of regal elements, lots of gold and white, just to be like, okay, you're getting a unicorn and this is going to happen. There are also rainbow motifs throughout. Another scene that I really love, when she at first decides that this idea is crazy, that she's getting unicorn, she runs away and decides that she has to become an adult and therefore go to Staples. And... Her first meeting with Virgil is also just really great because it's not like her meeting with her coworkers where she's within this, this gray background. It's more like they literally meet in probably the most colorful section of a hardware store that I've ever seen. And then when he agrees to build the stable for her, they end and there's like a little clock with a rainbow. And it's very fun. That's absolutely not something you can find in a hardware store. But I also like that there's just kind of outlandish little details within the film because this film isn't grounded in reality. It's definitely not. So these little details are definitely just necessary and fun to look at, especially in hindsight. I also like the juxtaposition between her like preparing for getting her unicorn in the hardware store, for example, or dying hay and her just kind of living everyday life. It's always very colorful, very hopeful, kind of very warm lighting. Also in the store, there is a big projection screen. It usually is of unicorns, but what I really like is that they also use it practically in that it sometimes serves as like a background for what the characters are doing. For example, Samuel L. Jackson just acting in this, this scene and he has the complimentary colors. He stands out, he's making a statement. Lastly, uh, I wanted to talk about the sign for the store. So when Brie Larson comes, it is a very, very large, loud neon sign. When a woman comes later who also needs to meet the unicorn, she's wearing a black suit and sign for the store is much more muted. It changes to the person that needs the unicorn at that time, which I think is a really fun detail. I also wanted to briefly talk about the lighting within this film. Uh, the film uses diegetic lighting, which is, um, let's see, diegetic describes anything that exists within the world of the narrative. You can see the thing that's making the light, but it really adds to the closeness of the audience with the characters, string lights. It really makes it like really magical and enhances the fantasy aspect. And I also just wanted to talk about this one scene really quickly. There's a scene in which Kit is working late at her job and the friend that she makes at work walks in to the very dark office and carries the lamp that she uses to light her face with her. And there's no reason for her to be carrying this lamp besides lighting her face. And it's incredible. This movie specifically has stuck with me for this long because of this scene. I love it.
The lighting also enhances a lot of the production design. The tents in the camping scene are all different colors, but are also, you can see that they're different colors because there are individual lights within the tent. Also during the camping scene, a thing that I think is really funny is that her parents are wearing head flashlights and that's the only thing that's lighting Brie Larson's face as she's talking. That's generally just not a normal thing to do and I think it enhances the kind of overall quirkiness of the film. And that brings me to the final part of my very long analysis it looks like. I just love the, the just quirkiness of the film. Like, it's very indie, quirky, quirky girl kind of stuff, but like, it spoke to me. It's it's definitely not for everyone. The All of the jokes are very wry, all of the characters are a little weird in their own ways, but it's very fun. But I think it enhances the relatability of the entire thing, especially like... What are your uh, long-term goals? Uh... I would like to not be a great disappointment. Like part-time or full-time. But I also think that Kit's character is not completely like, like I'm quirky kind of stuff. A lot of the things that make her different are also kind of criticized by other characters, but also like her kind of disregard for her parents is criticized. She has flaws and she has, she has character development that's relatable. And I think that's important is to not just have like a one dimensional manic pixie dream girl kind of, kind of character. Although, you know, there, there could be arguments to say that she is a manic pixie dream girl, but like, you know. but also like other characters within the show, the more normal characters are also given like a little bit of depth and understanding. Her coworker who is very kind of boring wants to make an Etsy shop. It's not only focusing on Kit because she's loud and um, weird, you know? And lastly, the movie kind of ends on a note of like, you should be yourself, things that make you unique. What's really important is like just trying your hardest and being the best person that you can be. And I guess that the whole reason that this movie kind of resonated with me was because at the time that I watched this film, I was like a year or two out of college with a bachelor's of arts in film, which, you know, and I realized that like, I felt the same. Like people tell you that there's a practical way to be an adult and get a job and all these different things. And that's not always the case. That's not always everyone's lot in life. I kind of realized that what's really important is staying true to oneself and, and to keep trying. And maybe that's why the film resonated so deeply with me. Or maybe I just have bad taste. Who knows? Like, that's also very, very possible. So, I talked for a long time. Hopefully this video isn't incredibly long. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me if you liked the film. If you didn't like the film, that's also valid. You know, art is subjective. But yeah, if you like this video, make sure to like it. Subscribe if you want. Comment if you feel like it. Catch you next time. Thanks.